Hi guys and welcome to another video. Have you ever wondered why your weight stays the same, your body shape doesn't change, even though you're doing exercise and in a calorie deficit? Oh, you said eating in a calorie deficit means I would lose weight. Well stay tuned and let's find out the five main reasons that you are not losing fat. Number four and number five may surprise you. So before your heads explode, a bit like this. Let's just get one thing straight. If you are in a true calorie deficit, you will lose weight. Sadly, a deficit isn't solely based on calories going in. There is also the factor of calories going out. Today, I'm gonna to break down five reasons why you are not losing weight while being in a calorie deficit. So reason number one, you're not actually in a calorie deficit. All the time I hear people say, I'm eating in a deficit. But when we look at their food intake, we realize that they're eating a lot more calories than originally thought. For example, the oils they're using on food, they're not counting those or they're not thinking about those. That uh, afternoon biscuit that you have that, oh, that one won't hurt. Well, that one actually turns to four. That four probably is hurting. Again, maybe in the morning you fancy a little snack. So you have a cake, you have a biscuit without really thinking about what you're doing. Portion sizes of food being wrong, especially if you're eyeballing the portion size. That squirt of mayonnaise that you might be having that you originally thought was 50 calories, maybe close to 150 or 200 calories. The list goes on. If you believe you're in a calorie deficit and you're not tracking your calories, you're not tracking your food, chances are you're not in a deficit. Reason number two, you might be gaining muscle mass. One of the reasons early on that the scales may be staying the same is because you've gained a little bit of muscle mass, especially if you've started resistance training. More muscle also means more water held. If you are using scales as a single metric, it's very difficult to figure out where these fluctuations are coming from and what potentially might be the issue of why the scales are staying the same. If you're taking measurements or if you're taking photographs as well as weighing yourself on the scale, you can find out very easily whereabouts or where possibly those fluctuations are coming from. Maybe your weight's gone up, but your measurements have come down. That would mean to me that you've gained muscle, but you've lost fat. If you haven't taken measurements yet, now is the time to start. Reason number three, you have lost weight, but you are still eating the same food. So at the start of your journey, you started eating in a deficit. You lost a portion of your body weight, but now you're not losing any more weight, but you are still eating the same food that originally lost you that weight. Simply put, you are now eating far too many calories for the amount you're burning. A smaller body requires less calories to function or to maintain itself. Let's just briefly talk about metabolism. I spoke about this in my previous videos. When we talk about metabolism, we normally talk about it as a single entity, but there is a lot of factors involved when we talk about metabolism really. When we talk about it in fitness and nutrition, we're talking about four things. And these four things can be split into your BMR. BMR stands for your basal metabolic rate. And this is how many calories you burn while at rest. Then we have NEAT. NEAT. This stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And this is how many calories you burn on a daily basis just by moving, talking, fidgeting, etc. Then we have EAT, EAT, exercise activity thermogenesis. This is how many calories you burned during planned exercise. So at the gym, running, etc. Then lastly, we have something called TEF, TEF. This is the thermic effect of food. This is the amount of calories your body is required to break down the food that you eat. So back to BMR. If you've lost a large portion of weight, this part of metabolism gets affected. A smaller body requires less calories at rest. So if you're still eating the same amount of calories that you had when you were a bigger version of yourself, you potentially now are eating too many calories for your frame. This is one of the biggest reasons most diets work initially and then unfortunately fail. I don't like using the word fail, but they stop working. It's simply because of this one factor. Reason number four, your NEAT has decreased. Again, non-exercise activity thermogenesis is the amount of calories you burn by walking, fidgeting, talking, and just general movement. When you reduce your calories or you go on a restrictive diet, this part of your metabolism gets affected. Your body slows down to try and conserve energy. This is called adaptive thermogenesis or metabolic adaptation. Your body is literally trying to stop you from using energy. So you don't blink as much, you don't talk as fast. You don't shake your hands around as much. You even become more sluggish. This can then relate to working out your exercise activity again, because your intensity drops, because you just haven't got the energy to put in your 100% like you normally would. The only way around all of this is by getting your neat up and move more when you just don't want to. 
Reason number five, your cheat day is screwing you over. Now I'm not saying cheat meals, refeeds, free meals are bad. They're not, they're absolutely fantastic. They're the only thing that will probably stop you from going insane while dieting. The issue is, is the binging that happens sometimes on cheat days. Let's say your daily calorie allowance is 1,400 calories, Monday to Sunday. Monday to Friday though, you do the 1,400 calories. You hit your steps, you track everything, everything's perfect. You get to the weekend and you think, well, I've been good all week, I can let loose a little bit this weekend. So you don't track, you don't move as much because you're chilling out. That one or two days can quite easily turn the week from a calorie deficit into calorie maintenance and even to a calorie surplus. So you could potentially be gaining weight just because of your cheat day or your weekend. This chart is an example of what's going on. As you can see, Monday to Friday, everything's hunky-dory. Saturday and Sunday, binge fest, and calories are a lot, lot higher than they would be Monday to Friday. This one little mistake could be your biggest downfall. I'm not saying you can't enjoy a slightly off-plan meal, but I am saying meal, not day. You need to enjoy your food you're eating. And this is why tracking is so important. If you can track the foods that you want to eat, you can then see what food you're allowed. So don't allow common buzzwords like cheat day, cheat meal, get confusing for you. And keep it simple and you will achieve your goals. Hopefully you can now take a look at your current lifestyle and see where you might be going wrong, or at least make small changes to stop it from going wrong in the first place. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you haven't already, make sure you press that subscribe button and ring that bell so we can become best friends. If you'd like to see more of this guy, you can find me at Facebook and at Instagram. I'll see you there. Well, as always, take care and farewell.